Hey everybody, welcome back to It's Only Food with Chef John Polite. Today we are making deep fried artichoke carts. You're not going to want to miss this one. Well, thanks so much for stopping by. I am your charming host, Chef John Polite. And if this is your first time watching, or you just want to learn how to make awesome, awesome food, or maybe even start your own cooking channel, then go ahead and do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button right there, and then click on that notification bell to be notified each and every time I upload new content. All right, well, you clicked on this video to watch me fry up some artichoke hearts. So let's head into the kitchen and get started with the ingredients. All right, well, here's our ingredients. Of course, we have the whole artichoke hearts. I've got some eggs. I got some Kellogg's cornflake crumbs here. Uh, just some plain old canola oil, lemon pepper. I got some ginger and an orange. So we are going to start with the prep. All right, so I've got our I got three eggs and then I put a teaspoon of ginger and a teaspoon of the garlic pepper in here and we'll whip that up and then over here in the pan our dredging station we have our Kellogg's cornflake crumbs that we are going to put the artichoke hearts in after we let them drain a little bit I'm going to squeeze these to get a little more of the juice out of them but you got to remember when we go to fry these that you don't have to worry about frying them all the way through because they're not a raw meat product like a chicken finger. So they are just um, artichoke hearts and they're kind of mushy because they're canned. I could have gotten real artichokes and I could have cut, you know, a dozen of those up and showed you how to cut an artichoke. But these are just as good and I think they're going to be quite tasty. I am tempted to cut these in half though lengthwise to get a crisper chip. And I might do that. I'm still trying to make up my mind. In the meanwhile, let's just whip this up here and get all those uh, flavors incorporated into this egg wash. Beat it like it owes you money. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and cut those in half and I'll be right back. Okay, I got my artichokes. I cut them in half lengthwise just so they make a nicer little chip. I guess would be the term. So here we go with our, we are going to start breading these up and get them into the pan. I'm not going to show you all of them, but I'll show you a couple because this is kind of hard to do through the lens of a camera. <laughs> so there we go. And we're just going to fry this and that's going to get nice and brown. So let me finish these up and we'll head over to the fry pan. All right, here's our pan of, uh, breaded artichoke hearts really really reminds me of oysters so I'm just letting these kind of absorb some of those crumbs I got a little grumbly in there to uh, you can see it's starting to bubble that way I know when my oil is just right and when that's all set to go we will start dropping these in one at a time all right it wasn't hot enough but now it is I had a prototype in there I just want to make sure so got my paper towel ready to go and I'm just going to start dropping these in one by one, literally dropping them in because I don't want the hot oil to get on this plastic glove and I'll be in a world of hurt. Really reminds me of oysters. Now I did some deep fried shrimp, coconut shrimp in the same pot. I'll leave a card right here for that show. You can check that out. Those turned out really well. All right, I have got all of them out of here, so I got two free hands now. Those are looking good. It smells great. I'm going to flip them over here too. They are deep fried, so you really don't need to flip them. I'm just checking them. So you got to make sure your oil is hot. That's very important. Anytime you do any kind of deep fried food, you got to make sure that oil's hot. You pull one of these out, and we can get a look at it to see if it's even. Whoop, if it's getting a get a little bit of a crust on there. So it takes about a little bit more than a minute and a half, two minutes. So what I'm going to do now 
is I'm going to pull these out, put them on that paper towel, let them dry up just a little bit from that oil. And then I will bring you back and you will be able to see this in all of its fine glory, plate it up and present it to you. Then we'll take some awesome shots for social media, put those pictures into the timeline with some groovy music, and then we're going to come back and we're going to try out, see what they taste like. Don't go away. I'm going to try one of these out. I did hit it, still a little hot. <laughs> I did hit it with a little sea salt in there. It's an old trick we learned in the restaurant industry that had a bar attached to it. Any restaurant that had a bar attached, you would always salt the snot out of the food so they would buy more booze in the bar. So I just, it helps with deep fried food too to bring out the flavor more too. So I'm going to try this out. This one right here. It's focus, focus, focus. There it is. Anyway, anyway, I'm going to train, change the tripod over. And we will close it up. There is your deep fried artichoke heart with the Kellogg's cornflake crumbs. It smells really good. The first thing that I get from this is the mouthfeel, and it is just like an oyster. It's got the same mouthfeel as an oyster texture. I can hit that ginger coming out of there. And of course the artichoke, canned artichoke, but it adds some fantastic texture if you like oysters. Very good, very good. I'm going to eat this whole thing after I say goodbye to you guys. But This is a good one, an easy one to make. You can add whatever ingredient you want to that to make it go with an Asian flair or a Spanish flair or whatever you want. It's up to you. I'm just showing you the basics. There's all kinds of different kinds of dips you can do too. You can do tzatziki or hot sauce or sour cream, yogurt, whatever you want to do. You don't even need a dip. This is pretty good with that one. Yeah, this is really good. I'm going to be trying different ways of doing this. But this was a good, good idea. Hope you give it a try. All right, well, I've got this recipe right down there in the description box. And there's also some other things I'd like you to check while you're down there. One, I've left two links down there for my e-commerce store where I sell my seasoning, spices, and herb blends. Two, if you're a YouTuber and you are a creator, then you need to check that TubeBuddy link. Go ahead and hit that. That will give you the views and the subscribers that you need to make your show a success. And then three, all my affiliate links for all my equipment that I use are down there as well. They are affiliate links, so I do get a little bit of a cut every time somebody buys something that I recommend. All right, well, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not done so yet. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Leave us a comment down below, and then make sure you share this video and this channel with everybody you know. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time right here on It's Only Food. Take care. Bye-bye.